We're the leading manufacturer of flow batteries worldwide. We provide flow batteries to CNI customers, utilities and electricity networks. We're listed on the London Stock Exchange with operations in the UK, Canada, US, South Africa and China. Flow's key benefits are being able to handle a very high throughput. So as a technology, it likes to be worked as hard as possible, which is why it's great for putting alongside lithium. If there's a way of splitting the work, so Flow can do a lot of the high utilization work and then lithium can provide um, some of the peaking capability, then, then that's a very good mix. Flow is also a very safe, uh, a, a very resilient technology. Our flow batteries are going to be combined with the lithium in a hybrid system that will be a world first at this scale. In terms of expertise and insight, we bring not only our proprietary non-degrading and modular technology, but also a wealth and experience in delivering these, these systems. And what's really exciting about it is it's a rare opportunity to test a hybrid system at this scale and demonstrate its capabilities. I believe that these hybrid systems, such as ESO, could play a key role in balancing our future grids and we're getting the chance to demonstrate one right now. At a macro level, the decarbonisation angle of the project's incredibly important part of, of all of this and kind of the core reason why all of us working on the project get out of bed in the morning. The ESO project is, is a world first and not only puts Oxford on the map in, in terms of the model for urban decarbonisation, but also demonstrates how the technology exists right now to achieve what was probably thought nearly impossible just a few years ago. On a, on a micro level, I hope the, the project demonstrates to developers the value of different forms of energy storage within a project and their need to consider requirements matched to the technology they choose for the project they develop. So I hope that we'll see the last of coal in the EU through fair price and carbon emissions leading to a world where renewables are the cleanest, but also the cheapest option. We will also need varied storage projects, and I hope we don't see kind of a one-size-fits-all approach. On the policy side, we have to fight for every single line of, of, of market-driven return. It means that the kind of how we scale, it won't be easy to get to that, to that original size, but as soon as the market needs that storage, then the escalation and the speed of deployment will be rapid. The grid has been able to demonstrate that at very high levels of renewable penetration, it is able to work. And I think that's a really, really important thing to show because it wasn't that long ago that people were thinking that there's a limit to how much sort of renewable penetration can be, maybe at five or 10%. And we've kind of shown we can do much more than that. And that's really exciting.